Well, hello, good people, and welcome back to the channel. In just a few moments, you'll get to hear my thoughts and feelings on episode nine of Naked and Afraid of Love. Earlier today, I uploaded a review thinking that this episode was the finale for the season, simply because several websites listed as such. But I want to give a special shout out to Nelson from the show, who shared that episode 10 will be the season finale, and there will also be a reunion show to follow it. So in the words of an amazing philosopher named Biggie Smalls, if you don't know, now you know. With that being said, on tonight's episode, there are three participants who tapped out and quit before the conclusion of the show. Who were those participants, you may ask? Stay tuned to find out. The episode opens up with Nelson providing much needed clarity on which participants have been hooking up and which are pretty close to getting it in like two jackrabbits trapped in the tube sock. We see scenes of Crystal and Candace getting very touchy-feely, Steph rubbing on Ariel, and Castellay sleeping directly on top of Jay. Nelson doesn't mention anything about Britt or Michael for a good reason. They're still at odds about what happened the last episode. The next morning, we learn that Michael is still in his feelings about the whole Bennett situation, and he is away from the group doing his own thing. Britt, however, is with the rest of the group, and she's talking to them about her situation with Michael. Michael then rejoins the group, and there's a ton of awkward energy between the two of them. Michael and Britt then have some much needed alone time, but during this time, Michael is still being awkward and distant towards Britt. We then see Jay, Cassilet, Steph, and Ariel hanging out and discussing Michael and Britt. The topic of couples being island official pops up, and Ariel noticed that she and Steph are the only couples that are not island official. This doesn't seem to move Steph in any way. Jay and Castellet then have a scene together, and they get into a long, drawn-out argument over a spider. Castellet sees a spider near her, and she wants Jay to move it. However, Jay doesn't feel like moving it away, and they go back and forth with it. I can only speak for myself, but every time a woman has ever asked me to handle a bug for her, I do it because I don't feel like going back and forth with her on the issue. In my opinion, Castellet was testing Jay to see if he would protect her or let her fend for herself and Jay failed that test miserably. We then go back to see Nelson, who realizes that he's everybody's third wheel. Jay also realizes that Nelson is everybody's third wheel, so he comes up with the idea of how the group could show Nelson how much they like him. The group then plays a game of hide and seek, and they pick Nelson as the it person. When it's time for Nelson to find everybody, he sees everybody standing together and holding out leaves that spell the words, we love you. This catches Nelson by surprise, and he's very appreciative of it. Shortly after the scene, Nelson realizes that his time is up and he decides to tap out. In my opinion, this tap out was very long overdue, but it appears that Nelson has made a positive impact on everybody in the group. We then get a scene of Mike and Steph going together for a walk. Mike confesses that he was getting annoyed by Britt and questions how their relationship on the island would translate to the real world. Steph gives Michael some words of encouragement and Michael vows to make things work between him and Britt. Later on in the episode, Michael invites Britt on an expedition. They arrive at their destination, and Britt sees a big I love you Britt message in the sand. They sit in the water, and Michael is upfront about how he felt about the whole Bennett situation. This news angers Britt, who goes on a rant about how her integrity is being questioned and the importance of trust. They ultimately kiss and make up. Crystal and Candace have their one-on-one. -on -one. Crystal is complaining about how hot it is and how she doesn't have the energy to do much. Candace is very comforting and understanding of this. Candace then makes Crystal some banana coconut pudding, and from the looks of things, I wouldn't touch it if my life depended on it. Later on in the episode, Crystal is doing some Kung Fu Panda meditation, and Candace is serenading her with the song, and she gives Crystal that coconut banana pudding concoction. All I know is I hope Crystal prayed over it. The two of them get closer. We then go back to see Ariel and Steph. Ariel is excited because they finally have the shelter to themselves, and she aims to get her fire and desire on with Steph. Steph realizes this, and he puts some water on that fire by inviting Michael to sleep in their shelter with them. In the interview, Steph shares again how he feels that he and Ariel are moving too fast. The uncomfortable truth is that Steph is stringing Ariel along because he doesn't have any other better options there. Now, throughout the entire season, I'll admit that I haven't been Ariel's biggest fan, but I do feel that she deserves to be with someone that can be honest with her about how they feel, and it's obvious that Steph doesn't want to directly hurt her feelings. But ironically, 
he's indirectly hurting her because she knows how he feels. The next morning, Steph notices that Ariel is sitting alone. He sits with Ariel and Ariel pins him down on having that difficult conversation. Possibly due to editing, we don't really get a resolution to the conversation that they had. Ariel then decides to tap out. And at this point in the show, I was pretty happy for her. I think she deserved better and she even manages to ignore Steph while saying her goodbyes to everybody. Michael and Jay then talk alone. Jay discusses his feelings for Castellet and Michael seems supportive. Castellet and Britt then talk alone. Britt seems to be a hater during this time and she describes Jay as being aloof. Now I'm pretty sure if anybody called Britt out on her shortcomings as a person, she would take it personal, but I digress. Now with Steph being single, he comes off as happy and there's a scene with him getting a little too flirtatious with Candace and it catches the attention of Crystal. Crystal swoops in and claims Candace for herself. Steph then realizes that there's nobody there for him and he decides to tap out and say his goodbyes to the group. And as the saying goes, boom, 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 another one bites the dust. So we're finally down to our final six. And the episode ends with a montage of each couple sharing some time together. Overall, on a scale of one to 10, I'll give this episode a three. The episode spent 47 minutes telling a story that you could have told in 15 minutes. And with one episode left, I'm wondering how things will end with the remaining couples. But if I was a betting man, I say that only Crystal and Candace make it after the show's over. But we shall see what the finale has in store for the fans. Well folks, this marks the end of another review. Please let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to reply to each and every comment that's posted. Until next time, stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.